Hi everyone, welcome to For the Love of Reading with me, Justin. I am coming to you from one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, a library, and I have found a special book just for you. I don't know about you, but I love to reread books. Some books I read over and over and over again. Even though I know what's going to happen, I love the characters and the action and the suspense. Oh my goodness, I love to reread a good book. Well, so does our friend Mungo. And Mungo rereads his favorite book so much that one of the characters decides he's just not even going to help anymore. He's going to leave the story. Can you believe that? I wouldn't know what to do. Well, we're going to find out what Mungo does in this book, Mungo and the Picture Book Pirates. And we're going to find out in three, two, one, go. Hey everyone, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to find out when I put new books up on the channel. And now, Mungo and the Picture Book Pirates by Timothy Natman and Adam Stower. This is Mungo. His favorite book is called The Seafaring Adventures of Captain Horatio Fleet. Last thing every night, he makes his mum read it to him. Twice if she's lucky, five times if she's not. And this is how the story goes. Once upon a time, Admiral Mainbrace and his plucky cabin girl Nora set sail in their fine Spanish galleon. They had only been at sea for two days when they were attacked by Barnacle Bill, the terror of the high seas, and his dreaded purple berserker bird. Barnacle Bill's crew of scurvy pirates fell upon the Admiral's galleon in a flashing of cutlasses. They plundered its treasure and looted its booty. But, most frightening by far, they sang sea shanties so foul that anyone who heard them begged to walk the plank. It would all have ended badly for Admiral Mainbrace and Nora if their cries for help hadn't been heard by... Captain Horatio Fleet, the bravest ship's captain of them all. Daring Captain Fleet, who defeated the dreaded octopus of Bognor. Dashing Captain Fleet, who juggled with sharks and electric eels. Dazzling Captain Fleet, who ate piranha fish fingers and chips for his tea. He swung to the rescue at once. Not so fast, you scurvy dogs! cried Captain Fleet as he unplundered the treasure and deluted the booty. Then he tied the villains' throats in an expert display of knots so that they could never sing sea shanties again. Hooray! cried the Admiral. We're saved! And Captain Fleet married that plucky cabin girl, Nora. Together they set sail for the sinking sun and all the adventures that wait in the waters off the coast of tomorrow. The end. Again, Mummy, read it again, said Mungo. <sighs> Absolutely not, said Mum. I'm too tired. Because on this particular night, she'd accidentally read the book six times and not five. I'll leave the lights on if you like so you can look at it on your own. And so Mungo did. But this time, it was different. Oh, it was still the tale of how Admiral Mainbrace and Nora were attacked by Barnacle Bill. But this time, their cries for help weren't heard by Captain Fleet, the bravest ship's captain of them all. Because Captain Fleet was so worn out after going through the story six times in one night that he decided to take a holiday in Mungo's At the Seaside book. Mum! shouted Mungo. Aha! cried Barnacle Bill. Now's my chance. This time I'm going to marry Nora, the plucky cabin girl. Oh no, if this went on much longer, it wouldn't be Mungo's favorite book anymore. If you like the book so much, suggested Captain Fleet. Why don't you do something? Me, gulped Mungo. I can't do anything. 
Untie the girl, me hearties, grinned Barnacle Bill, and let the wedding begin. Oh, Christopher Columbus, cried Mungo. Mungo shut his eyes, held his nose, and jumped right into his favorite book. Head over heels, he tumbled and fell, plonk on the plank that boing like a diving board, sending him somersaulting high above the ship and down till he landed on Barnacle Bill and squished him splat. Just like that, flat as his hat. Hooray, cried the Admiral. We're saved. But he spoke too soon. The dastardly pirates were limping towards them, sharpening their swords and clearing their throats. Oh no, yelped Mungo, not the sea shanties. But he wasn't deterred, for behind him he heard the shrieks and squeaks of the purple berserker bird. Aha, cried Mungo, now's my chance. And he grabbed the burk so it squat and berserked around the deck in a flurry of feathers. The bird sent the pirates flailing and falling and splashing and sprawling. Help, help, they gargled and glugged. Don't you know pirates can't swim? So Mungo and Nora fished the pirates out of the sea and pegged them up on the rigging to dry. The admiral shook Mungo's hand. Nora kissed him. And Captain Fleet came back from his holiday. As the captain got ready to take his place back in the book, he pinned a medal on Mungo's pajamas. You see what you can do when you try, he said, Mr. Midshipman Mungo. When Mungo's mum came back to turn off the light, Mungo was fast asleep and clutching his medal, dreaming of pirates and purple berserker birds, and all the adventures that wait in the waters off the coast. Of tomorrow. The end. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? He jumped into the story, he was part of the story, he rescued everybody, oh my goodness gracious. Can you imagine jumping into your favorite story? Getting stuck in a hole full of honey with Winnie the Pooh? Going to with Charlie to the chocolate factory and eating so much chocolate. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Riding to the boat to the place where the wild things live and having a wild rumpus. Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine that would be so much fun. Well, <sighs> let's go find a good book, curl up and enjoy for the love of reading. See you next week. <laughs>